Hello folks and welcome to this quick introduction to the Java map merge method. Now the Java map merge method um, has quite a complicated signature so if I just click on that and uh, let me go here and we have a look it's got quite a lengthy Java doc and quite a complicated looking signature but we'll go through it in detail now. Okay so first of all it's a default method which means it's a method at the interface level the map interface uh, now, default methods can be overridden by implementation. So, hash map, uh, you know, uh, tree map, other types of maps can override this method and have their own implement implementation, or they can just rely on the default one. Okay, uh, these methods are available to instances, but they do have a default implementation if you don't want to implement your own, uh, and they are not static. Okay, now. The thing to look at the merge method is that you have a key which you're targeting, you have a value which you want to assign, it's just like you do with the put method, you have a key and a value. However, you also pass in this by function. Now we'll go through what that is in a minute, but at a high level, what you're saying here is that if the value is already present, so there's already a key for the key that we're passing in, and there's already a value, um, well, take the value that I'm giving you and take the value that's already there and map it and use this mapping function to map it. Okay, so I'll create a, a duplicate of this that just simplifies it. So if we just ignore this bit for a minute, it's not particularly interesting to what we're trying to prove. So you get three types, okay? You get the type V, which is the value that you're passing in. You get the other V, which is the value, the existing value, and you get the value that you're returning, okay? The merged value. So this is uh, one of these is the existing one, one of these is the one that you're passing in, and one of these is the value that you return. Now, if you notice, they're all V, the generic type V. The generic type V uh, means that the types of all three things have to be the same, okay? So that's just something to bear in mind. Now, this is a by function. In Java, you can pass code around in a kind of a functional style since Java 8, uh, and you get different types of functions. Sometimes the code that you pass around just produces a value, like a supplier. Sometimes it just takes a value and does something side affecting with it, like a consumer, etc., uh, etc. Et in this case, it's a by function. Uh, sometimes in other uh, libraries, this is called a function 2, which basically means it takes two values and returns one. So in this case, the two values that it's taking are the existing value, that's in the map, if there is one, and the new value that you're passing in, this one here. Okay, and then it's got a little bit of code that show that, that you provide that says how you wanna merge those two values. If there were two numbers and you wanted to add to the number, you might say, uh, you know, i plus x, okay? So you're adding the two numbers together. If they're strings, you might also use plus because it appends the two strings together, okay? So, um, let's look at some actual code. Okay, so here we have uh, a map, which is of type hash map. Now hash map overrides the merge method. So we're not using the default implementation when we're using hash map. And you'll find that that's often the case. So I will just run this bit of code. Let's comment out the rest of the code for a second. Okay, and let's run that. Okay, and you can see that it prints out ID one, two, three, and the value Joe, which is what we've got here, okay? So now if we look at, uh, let's uncomment this. Now let's look at some details. First of all, you combine uh, if the key is present and has a value, uh, and you return the new value or null if no value is associated with the key. So bear in mind that the merge actually returns the new value, which saves you having to then fetch it from the map. Okay, so it's just a kind of a utility thing. So if we look in this case, we're taking the value, uh, we're saying ID123 and Joe. And remember ID123 and Joe is already there. And we then map and merge the two values. Okay, so let's see what this prints out. Okay, now ignore the exception. That's for stuff we're doing a bit later on. So if you see ID123 Joe, that's this print statement here, which is the map in its original form. Afterwards, we get the up-to-date value after doing the merge operation, and you can see that it's merged the two values together. We've got Joe appended with Joe, okay? Not a great example, but, but it basically shows you what's going on. Okay, now, um, what happens if the key is not present? Okay, so if ID999 isn't already there, and we're trying to say, well, take this value and uh, take this key and add this value, but also merge if the uh, key and val if, if the key with a value is already present, right? So use this merge operation. Well, it basically ignores this combine function, okay? The by function. So let's just print this map out again after this. If we run that. 
right? So what you can see here is ignore all of this stuff. That's just other stuff going on. So we've got, oh, sorry, no, that's part of this. That's part of this. So we've got uh, the original map. Then we merge Joe and Joe to Joe, right? And then in what we've just done now is to say, well, here's a new ID with a new value. And we've also given you a merge operation. And the new value and key is this set here. Now there's no merging's gone on. It's basically ignored this function. Why has it ignored this function? Because there's nothing to merge. There's no existing value. You've just passed in a new value, right? So that's that. Now, um, what happens if your value is already there? So in this case, we've got ID 999. We are appending Smith to it. So we want Ali Smith, okay? But we've also given a merge function, which will be executed this time because the ID already exists with a value, okay? So this merge function will get executed, um, but the merge function returns null. So let's see what happens in this case. And we'll put a print statement here. This is the last print statement. So let's just run that again. So remember in this case, the merge function returns a null. Okay, and as you can see, Let's just run that again. Just to make it a bit easier to see. Okay, as you can see, we've got ID 123, Joe and Joe. So this ID 999 has actually been removed. So it's just something to be aware of that if your mapping function actually gets executed and results in a null, it will actually remove the value, which is probably most of the time not going to be what you want. But it's something to be aware of. If the value is there and your uh you want to say you want to replace the value, this is not the way to do it, okay? Um, if you want to append the value, this is also not the way to do it. If you return null from your function, um, you're basically trying to remove the value. So you're saying, if it's there, add this value. If it's not there, add this value. But if it is there, then basically wipe it to null. So don't don't append the value, don't really merge the value, just, just result in null, okay? It just removes the key as well. So you won't get the key with a null value, it will just remove it outright, okay? So this shows you what it looks like now. Okay, now let's have a look at null handling. So in this case, we've got a null key. Now null key doesn't make much sense, so why is it allowed? Why don't we get an error? Let's just see that we don't get an error. We'll print, do a print statement here. Okay, let's say why. Let's run that. Okay, now you can see that Y prints out. We didn't get an exception up until that point. We've got an exception later on, but that's just for some other demo code that we'll get to in a minute. So this code actually executes fine. It doesn't get an error. Well, some collections allow null keys. Okay, so fundamentally this method doesn't throw an exception if you get uh, a null key. It has the option to, so if you use a different collection that doesn't accept null keys, you can throw an except, it may throw an exception from there, a null pointer exception, but this one doesn't. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. You can have a null key in a hash map. Okay, now let's have a look at null values, right? So let's see what happens here. Let's try to print at this point. Okay, let's run that. Okay, and now Z is not printed out. Okay, there's no Z or Z um, printed out. So that means something went wrong before this. We've got a null pointer exception before this, and that's at this line here, and that's in this bit of code here. So where the value is being checked, hash map doesn't, uh, it doesn't accept nulls, okay? Now you may have a, uh, a separate collection that does accept null values, but hash map doesn't, okay? Um, and this doesn't really come into play because it's not got that far in the code yet. You can see that it got blocked on the value, right? So it's checking the value and throwing a null pointer exception. Now, it will also throw a null pointer exception if the remapping function is null. So we'll look at an example of that. So if I comment out this code, which generates an exception, let's have a look when the remapping function is null. So here the key is valid, not null. The value is valid, not null. Uh, but the remapping function is null. So let's just see what happens you get a null pointer exception, okay? So again, let's just have a look, make sure that's on that line, and let's look at which bit checked. It was the remapping function null check inside hash map. Okay, so it doesn't make much sense to pass in a null function, but if you've got some code that generates the function and somehow it generates a null, uh, then at least you'll get a runtime exception before you go too far.
Okay, so we'll comment that out as well. So let's just have a look at some of the exceptions that uh, this method can throw, the merge method. It can throw an unsupported operation exception because remember, we're mutating this map, okay? Um, which mutation is a dirty word to some people. So um, if you're working with an immutable collection, um, it's likely to throw an unsupported uh, unsupported operation exception if you try to merge because you're merging into the map, right? So you shouldn't be able to do that with an immutable map. Uh, so you'll get an exception, okay? Um, the other one is a null pointer exception. Now, if the key is null and the collection doesn't support null keys, and remember the hash map does, that's why we didn't get an exception in this case, um, <clears throat> it can throw a null pointer exception. Or if the value or the remapping function is null, it can throw an exception, okay? Which hash map does. Class cast exception. Now, this is a bit of a strange one because if you use generics, you shouldn't really get a class cast exception because at compile time, it will tell you that the value that you're trying to pass in isn't the right type. But remember, you can use a map in the raw type. Okay, that's still valid. Not very nice, but valid. So if you say map um, mm equals new hash map. Okay, now this is the raw type. We should get a warning saying be careful using the raw type but it still compiles, okay, no errors. So in this type, I could pass in a value that doesn't match the type that I'm interested in, even though the uh, person using the map isn't using the generics, which are optional, okay? So it's quite handy. And if you do implement your own map, it's probably a good idea to throw one of these just in case, uh, if, it's, if, you're, if you don't want to accept certain types, okay? Illegal argument exception. Now, if you want to prevent some particular value, so in this case, we were talking about the type. So if somebody passes in a uh, integer and you really only want to allow strings or certain other types, you can throw a class cast exception. But if somebody passes in, if you allow integers and those integers are, it's a map that's only meant to hold the ages of customers, for example, and you pass in, you know, 200 years old, you're unlikely to have a customer that's 200 years old. So you may decide to throw an illegal argument exception because the value, not the type, the value is too high or too low or for some other reason. Okay. Now let's have a look at another case. Now in this case, we're doing something very strange. We're, we're calling the merge method with a key and a value, <clears throat> all good. But then in the merge function, we are modifying the map, okay? Concurrent modification. So this is generally bad news. So let's just comment now and run it and see if we get a nice exception. Okay, no exception. So what's going on here? Well. Let's just take a look at that again. The value, the key A is not in the map. Okay. So this never gets executed because there's nothing to merge it into. Once we add that, if we run this again, let's see what happens. We get a nice concurrent modification exception. Okay. Now let's just see where that's coming from. There's a check inside hash map, inside the merge uh, method that looks out for, for concurrent modification and very smartly throws a concurrent modification exception. So that's just something to be aware of and that's something to avoid. Um, basically don't modify the map while you're already trying to modify the map, right? So this is an operation where you're trying to add a value or merge the value if it exists. If in, in the middle of doing that, if you're trying to modify the map, probably something's gone wrong in your design. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, yeah, why are you editing the map in the middle of editing it? Are you crazy? Okay, so that's pretty much sums up everything I wanted to talk about the merge method. I hope that was useful. Thank you for listening.